Looking to take your Madden game to the next level while dominating kids in Weekend League? And learn high level schemes from some of the best Madden pros in the world? Make sure you check out Hot Route Tips and use code CHAOS for 10% off at checkout. What's up guys, Chaos here, and bring you guys part two of our iPhone slot mini scheme out of the West Coast playbook. Now, if you guys didn't see part one last time, I broke down two very effective pass plays out of iForm slot that you guys can basically use to attack any coverage on the field. Now, the great thing about iForm slot is it's in several playbooks throughout the entire game, including my West Coast playbook, which is what my ebook is out of over on HotRot.Tips. If you guys haven't seen that or are interested in buying it, make sure I check out the description below. It's a very effective offense out of Gun Bunch Week, but it also gives you guys some run plays and some different things you can do with it, and it is a perfect addition to this iForm slot that I'm giving you guys for free over here on YouTube. If you guys aren't interested in the ebook, that's fine too. iForm slot is in several playbooks, as I said, and it's going to be a very useful form for you for running the ball as well as passing when they try to get too aggressive against your run. Before we get started, I want to give you guys a like goal. If we get 500 likes in this video, I'll jump here guys part three of this series where I do a chaos coaching video where I break down gameplay of me primarily using iForm slot. In that, I'm going to break down why I pass, why I run, going into the looks of my opponent, and why I choose what play that I do. All right, guys, so for today's video, we're going to be going over the H-back dive alert bubble as well as the stretch alert bubble. So both these plays are very effective. Dive and stretch are probably my two favorite runs in the entire game, no matter like out of what formation. They're just very effective runs this year. You get really good blocking on them and you get a lot of space to make moves. So the thing that's great about these is it puts two very good runs in a dive and a stretch into an alert bubble with a blocker on the outside to make plays. So they have to worry about blowing up two really good runs in dive and stretch out of the same defense because you don't know which one you're going to run. They don't know if I'm going to the dive. They don't know if I'm going to the stretch. And then they have to worry about a bubble screen. So with all those things that you have to worry about, it makes it very difficult to stop. And then on top of that, you have the two passing plays from last video, which I will link you guys to in the cards. So at, this formation is very deadly and it's going to be very tough to stop. So we're just going to start with the stretch, guys. And we're going to be going against a bunch of different defenses throughout this video. Cover 2, cover 3, cover 4. We'll, we'll start in 3-4 odd because that's probably the best run defense. Maybe we'll jump into some 4-4. Four, four. But we're just going to go through a bunch of different uh, run defenses and showing you guys how effective this can be, as well as showing you guys a couple different setups from it, a couple motions you can do, and a couple reads that you can make in order to know whether to throw the bubble or go to the run play. All right, so we're going to be starting off here in this stretch bubble. And you guys are going to see here the defense is in a cover 2. And with cover two, the run fits puts the outside corners in the run fit. They're going to be shooting down at the running back right away without hesitating. And that usually makes cover two pretty decent stretch defense. And I'm going to show you guys that this run, the way the, the blocking works, Juice will usually go out and get the cornerback right away, which makes it very, very good for you to get to the sideline. Now, a lot of the times against stretch, the cornerbacks will come in because they're in the run fit, but not when you're in this stretch from this particular formation. So I'll show you guys that now. The other thing about cover two is it's very bad bubble screen defense because the cloud flat will just come right up into Pettis and get blocked. And there's no one from the inside going out towards the flat to guard that bubble. But I'll get to that in a second. I'm just gonna show you guys the run the run first and show you guys how successful it can be if you let your running uh, your fullback get out there and get the block, right? So you let him go get Gilmore. Don't hit the, the sprint button. If you hit the sprint button, you might beat your fullback out to the cornerback and then you'll end up getting, getting tackled. So I'm gonna hold the sprint here. And he actually goes out and gets him right there. But every once in a while, if you out sprint your fullback, the, the cornerback will have an angle to make a play at you without getting blocked. But just hold off the hold off that trigger and get out to the outside. I'm picking up seven, eight, nine yards every single time. It's pretty easy. And with this game, if you have arm bar or uh, juke specialist or anything like that or evasive, you can go out there and just make those guys miss, right? So like you look at that, that's a huge run. And if I have arm bar or juke specialist or evasive i just stiff arm those guys or juke them out the way and i'm probably getting a touchdown when you have this much space the defense is going to be in big trouble and keep in mind they're in three four odd so they're not going to have safeties at linebacker they're going to have regular linebackers who aren't fast enough to keep up with your running back a lot of the time right so right here we're just having tons of success success against cover two now i'm going to show you guys the bubble out of this and why it's so effective the way if you throw a bubble screen out of an rpo out of the alert is you just press the receiver's button before you hand it off, right? So Goodwin's the receiver here. I'm just gonna hold B before I hand it off to Coleman and I'll make the pass. And you guys are gonna see how to cover two. You're basically just reading this outside linebacker. You're looking at the outside linebacker in front of Goodwin. If it's cover two, he's gonna not uh, go out with him. If it's a cover three or cover four and he's in the flat, he's gonna go out and kind of follow Goodwin a little bit. Now since it's a linebacker, you can usually throw it anyways, but regardless, that's the read that you're trying to make to see what zone he's in and what coverage shell they're in. So right here, you can see he didn't go out. You hit Goodwin, you have 98 speed in the flats, and you go get your 10 yards. Now, I didn't get the best 
uh, rack animation, but I still was able to get 10 yards out of that, right? So I'm just reading that linebacker. He doesn't go out with them. And now you, you have tons of space with room to juke and spin and make a ton of plays. So cover two, which when it's usually the best stretch defense, is not going to do a good job against this because of the fact that it's a bubble screen. Now the guy missed his block right there, so that's why I got tackled. But as long as the wide receiver usually makes his block, you're going to have a ton of success with it. Like the, the only time he has, he's only been one time where he didn't get chipped like that. I'll show you guys in the replay what the guy is doing. So essentially what he's doing is just um, coming inside and then this receiver just chips him in. Bam, right there, just one little chip and that's all you need to go out and get space. So that's, that's pretty much it against cover two. I'll show you guys the dive. So you can do the same thing out of the dive. If it's uh, not a bubble screen, I mean, if it's uh, not a cover three or cover four, you can just hit your bubble out there in space and go make a play. And then if it's not uh, if it's not cover two, you can just run the dive. So it's really easy right here. Just go out and get space, go get your 10 yards. So it's even worse if they press. I pressed right there. And that basically ropes the guy into the block. So quickly go back to the dive. The guy on the outside just automatically gets blocked. And that was a weird rack animation, but ended up me getting a touchdown. But you guys see, cover two, you just can't be in it when you when you play against this uh, this little run scheme here. So that's how to cover two. Now I wish I'm going to cover three, and then we'll do cover four after. All right, so now we're in cover three, and you guys see the run fits here. The outside corner is no longer in the run fit, so he's going to back up on the snap, and you're going to have a ton of space when you're running this stretch. You see Juice goes and gets him because he backs up, and you guys are basically off to the races. Cover three doesn't have much of a chance at stopping this just because the way that the blocking is, you before the corner would come down and, and like take up a block early. Now he's taking up a block late because he backs up on the snap. Read your blocks. I got I ran a little bit fast there, kind of outran my blocks. It's something that I had told you guys to worry about before. Don't hold the right trigger right away. Uh, let it let your guys go out there and make a play for you, then go. So you see right there, that was perfect patience. So let me go back to the replay so I can show you guys what you should be doing on this run. So I didn't touch the right trigger until Juice went out and got his block. So I'm not, not sprinting, not sprinting, not sprinting. I'm letting this linebacker be there, that's fine. And then now I hit the sprint, right? Now I'm out running him and now Juice has his block and I'm off to the races picking up 25, 30 yards, right? So I'll, I'll uh, baseline press here just to show you guys it's still gonna be successful versus it. And that's even versus three four odd when the safeties come up. Like so, the safeties come in the box in three four odd when you when you baseline press, and you're still gonna have a ton of space there. Now Juice tripped me up, making his block, but you guys saw there was still a ton of space for me to make plays. And I'm telling you, the way that this game is with armbar and evasive, if you get a one on one, you are a hundred percent going to make that guy miss, and you are going to have a ton of success with it too. So just keeping that in mind, I don't have anything on Tevin Coleman. He's just fast. And you're honestly just better off getting a little bit slower guy who can make someone miss. And like right there, like you get a speed boost out of your juke and you're boom, you're gone, right? So this run is very, very good against cover two. And it's very, very good against cover three. You guys are seeing I'm having success pretty much every single time. Haven't been blown up once for loss. And for the most part, I'm getting 10, 15, 20, 25 yards, even a couple touchdowns out there, right? So I'll show you guys now with the bubble screen read um, that... You're going to see that this linebacker, so if you look at the cover three, the linebacker or the safety is going to be in a purple. So on the right side, the linebacker is in a purple. On the left, the safety is in a purple. If you base align it, it makes it a little bit worse of defense because the guy's farther away. But for the most part, you guys can see, like, you're watching those guys on, the, on your reads, right? So if I throw this bubble, he follows him out, and he's going to make the tackle on him. Now, if it's base aligned... He's gonna have a little bit more trouble getting out there just because he's farther away. And you'll probably be able to pick up yards, but for the most part, the guy is in the flat and he goes and guards the bubble. So they basically have to be in cover three if they're gonna stop this bubble screen. And if they're and they're never really gonna pick it, to be honest, they're just gonna be able to tackle you. So it's not like it's a risk against you. It's just the fact that you're probably not gonna pick up a ton of yards on it, but you do have room. It's, it is a one-on-one. -on -one. So if you can make them miss like that with a juke, Maybe you have evasive or something on your wide receiver. That's something you can do and make plays with. So that's the uh, that's the bubble part. So you don't want to throw that against cover three and cover four, but then you still have the dive, which is very effective if you get if you get some decent blocking. So sometimes they're going to block shit up the middle, but I do really like dive this year. I feel like guys get uh, really good blocking um, when at least not at least at least in regs and mutt uh, practice mode. You know sometimes can be a little bit quirky, but the dive is a very effective run. You just got to pick your right gap. And it's not like I'm getting blown up. So if it's a second and two, 
or a third and one. I'll probably run this dive, just hoping I can pick up pick up a few with chances at more. So the stretch obviously has a lot more bigger play potential, but this dive, it has the short yardage gains that I need, as well as a little bit of potential to break one if they over pursue, right? So like if they baseline here and um, they wanted to stop this bubble screen, so maybe they put this guy in a hard flat and then they blitz this linebacker, blitz these linebackers. Sometimes you can, they can all just get picked up and you just get to the second, third level really easily, like just like that. That's what I'm talking about. When people are trying to stop the run, their first instinct is, let me just blitz all my linebackers, right? So if they do that, you can always like just run stretch and try to get out there, but you can also just get over pursued linebackers. So they all just kind of ran to the, uh, to the gap and just ran into their blocks instead of containing themselves, right? So they had trouble stopping the run, so they just blitzed everybody. And look at this, you just take this gap and everyone just kind of goes to the left. I don't know why, but they do. And you just have tons of space to work with, right? Now you're gonna see when I don't blitz everybody that they're gonna have, like, they're just gonna kind of play gap contain, which does a good job for them. Cover three is probably the best against dive, I think. And you guys are gonna see against cover four, I'm gonna have success with uh, with this dive a lot, like a lot more than two, three yards. But at the same time, it just keeps them honest and it helps you guys get short gains. And if they're staying in their cover three, just go hit them with a stretch and you can go pick up uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards, right? So let's go on to cover four. All right, so for the last part, we're in cover four here, right? You guys will see the safeties are in the run fits now and the outside corners are not. So that's gonna make this actually like worse run defense against the dive. Cause when I was telling you at the end of the cover three, when more people are just shooting down at the run against the dive, it usually just ropes them into blocks and gives you space to kind of make moves and get out into the open field, right? So it's not gonna be great dive defense. It actually is gonna be decent stretch defense for one reason, because Bennett and Wise Jr. are in contains. It allows them to shoot down uh, across the outside and kind of blow up your stretch sometimes. Now, if they don't leave those contains, if they crash them in some sort of way, they're gonna mess up their run defense, right? So they have the contains here, and you're gonna see Ben is probably gonna shoot down, and he does, and it forces me back inside. Now, he doesn't always make the play. I gained five yards right there, right? But it does mess you up. It kind of it kind of screws you, like screws your mind up of where to go on your run. It makes you cut back. And he doesn't always make the play, but since he forces you back inside, he does make the play for you. But now if you if you do like crash down or something and get rid of that, like if you're worried about the dive, he no longer will do that. I think I just ran commit. <laughs> run commit so bad. Like I get a 30 yard gain on run commit, but if they crash their D line down instead of instead of um, leaving that contain out there, you get to the outside just fine and you can have like room to run, right? So it's up to them if they want to stop the dive they're probably gonna have to crash down because the contain is gonna mess up their uh their dive defense and i'll show you guys that but if they crash down then you hit them with the stretch so it's really just a chess match of which one they really want to go to uh but i'll leave the contain out there now and i'll show you guys the dive and show you guys how much space you have to just kind of go out and make a play now you want to keep off that right trigger i can't stress that enough when you're running this dive keep off the right trigger so you guys can actually pick your hole. So it takes a second for the hole to develop, but I'm just kind of tiptoeing a little bit through it, figuring out where they're gonna block shit, where they're not, and either cutting left or right. So I cut right and just get right through this hole and I get six or seven yards. If you pick the wrong gap, you could end up like getting like a no game when you should have had more. So right here again, I pick the left side. So it's just really watching where your hole develops not holding that right trigger and shooting through that gap. So I'll show it a couple more times here. When they have these contains out there, they really don't do a good job of stopping this dive. So again, it's just a chess match. If they're in cover two, I hit my bubble screen. If they're in cover three or cover four, I'm running the ball, but am I going to a dive or a stretch? It depends on what they're doing with their defense. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys in the gameplay. I'm kinda just gonna be making reads and explaining to you guys why I choose my certain plays, why I choose the dive, why I choose the stretch, why I threw the bubble on that last play, stuff like that. And you guys are gonna be able to see that during the gameplay as well as why I go to the pass plays. Now, if the DT wants to play insane like that, he's probably gonna stop your run, but there's really nothing you can do about that. That almost never happens in this game. It's especially uh, not in mutt because for some reason, man, just people on this game just stick to blocks. I don't know what it is, but it's really easy to run the ball. So. That's the, that's the run scheme, guys. I mean, it's a very, very effective run scheme. That I actually ran the stretch there. You guys see that contain really screws you up. But that's it for the run scheme. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked the pass plays from last video. I will be doing a gameplay on this where I break down why I choose what I do. But hope you guys enjoyed. Take it easy. Peace.